Today I'm going to do a step transition blend out. I've done this in Katia and I've had several people request that I do it in NX. So here I go. So the first thing I do is set up my base elements, which are going to be a couple of face blends. Face blend from here, face blend to this, reverse, uh, radius, we'll go to four. And select OK. And, and this is one of those I don't want to trim anything right now. Go to face blend. I want this to this. Reverse that. Four mils is fine. And there are my face blends. Now the next thing I'm going to do, let me go ahead and change the colors of these. For that one, we'll use a nice dark blue. And for this one, we can use ourselves a nice, we'll go red. Now that I have my elements in place, uh, just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and hide these two. So now that I have those in place, I need to generate a couple of points. So I'll go into curve, I'll go into point. The points that I want to generate are intersection points. I want to create an intersection point from this edge to this edge. And I want to do the same here. You'll notice that my face blends are trimmed along. I'll come back and trim those when I need to. Now that I have my points in place, they're a little difficult to see, but they're there. You can see them in the, the model nav or the part navigator. It used to be called model navigator. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to create a um, ISO curve on this surface. Now depending on which surface you want to blend out and over is the surface you put the curve on. So I want to blend this surface out and I want this to run over the top. If I wanted this to run over in the opposite direction, I put the curve over here. So I'm going to pick this surface and I'm going to pick that point. Now that I have that in place, I need to generate another curve and I'm going to use bridge curve. Bridge curves allow me to specify a constraint face. And this is nice because this gives me the ability to quickly go in and say, okay, I want to create a bridge from this curve and I'm going to change this to through point. So I want to make sure my selection intent up here is through existing point, which is this point that I have created. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to say through point. I want to go to this point here. Now I also want to make sure that, as you can see, my bridge is wrapping around. So I want to reverse. Now that I have that reversed, you can see it cleaned up my, my curve. If I try reversing the other one, it's not, you can see it's not going to do too much for me. Okay, because I cleaned up this, initial, this one up here, it fixed them both. Now that I have that in place, everything is tangent, and I have to use tangent for this, I'm going to use my constraint face. My constraint face is going to be this. So now what's happened is I have a tangent curve from here to here on this face. Again, I cannot use G2 or anything like that because this tool doesn't allow a constraint face, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a G2 or a G3 with a constraint face. But in this case, if this is an interior part, more than likely it's more than acceptable. The, the bridge curve does a really nice job. So now that I have my curves in place, Next thing I need to do is I need to create the surface that's going to live on or, or live from this curve over to this edge and transition up and around. Now, uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and clean uh, this surface up a little bit. So I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to say trim sheet, take this one, and I'm just going to trim it here and apply. And I can do the same thing. I can go and trim this up to here and apply. Normally I'll do my trims a little bit later on uh, once I have everything built. Uh, I don't like to build on top of features and sometimes it can confuse NX a little bit just like any other CAD system um, but in this case just cleaning things up just makes sense. Now that I have that, next thing I need to do is I need to build my studio surface. My studio surface is going to go from here to here and I want to make sure the arrows flow in the same direction, so I'm just going to reverse that. And then I have my guide curves. My guide curves are going to be this and this. And again, I want to make sure they flow in the same direction. Now, here's the thing. i got to come down and mess, uh, specify that my tangents, my continuities, are all going to run on these faces. So my first curve was this one. 
you'll notice these are selected. Uh, I picked the edge, and because I picked an edge, it knows to pick the adjoining face. In this case, this was a curve that I had picked, and same thing with this one. This is a curve that I had picked, so it does not know to pick the adjoining face. So I'll pick that, and it puts in that surface. And all of these are tangent. Tangent's just fine for this, once again. Select OK. Then to finish this up, I'm just going to do a trim sheet. Trim that to there. And then I'm going to bring back these two so I can trim these out. I'm going to trim that to this and to this. And trim this to here. What's nice about this method is if I go into this bridge curve, I have some parameters that I can now modify and change that shape. So if I don't like something, I can come in here and say, okay, I want to change the way it flows a little bit. I have some capabilities. You can see that curve moving and, and changing this edge slightly. And again, the same thing for these face blends. If I don't like the size of the face blend, I can come in here and change that face blend and watch that transition update nice and cleanly. So that's uh, one of the ways that I tackle these types of transitions. I like to use these face blends. They're extremely robust, super powerful. You can put in a G2 uh, with the face. You can do curvature with these face blends if need be. Uh, you have the ability to quickly update these face blends. And again, because of the type of point that I use, these intersection points, everything stays, stays linked. So especially at this junction where these two face blends come together, that intersection point updates this ISO curve updates, thus everything updates nice and clean.